All right, in this lesson, we're going to use inverse normal to solve for the random variable x when we're given the mean and standard deviation. Okay, and in all our examples, the data will be normally distributed, so it will have the uh, bell curve. And uh, let's, let's look at the first example here. Okay, let's look at this problem here. I said uh, the length of x is normally distributed with a mean of 280 millimeters and standard deviation, um, that's what that symbol is, sigma, of 13 millimeters. Find the length that is exceeded by 10%. Um, I wasn't feeling too original and didn't give it context here. So <coughs> let's, let's see what this looks like. Let's draw a picture first of uh, the normal distribution curve and look at the top 10%. Okay, so I've got my curve. I've got my mean of 280. Um, and the top 10%, I'll say, is right here. And I want to find out what that value is there. So let's say that is the top 10%, which as a decimal is 0 0.1. And that's what we want to look at. Now, we're doing this without a graphics calculator. We're doing this with the good old-fashioned uh, Z table here. Now, reminder, the probability in the Z table are the ones attached to the mean, no tail end Charlies. So when we look up the probability here, we're actually looking up this bit here because that's the part that's attached to the mean, like that. So, okay, uh, so that's half. So 0 0.5 minus 0 0.1, 0 0.5 minus 0 0.1 is going to give us, of course, 0 0.4. Okay, and now what I do is I look up this probability of 0 0.4 on my Z table. Now remember, these are the probabilities, and these are the Z values. So I'm going to find 0 0.4 on here. Now what you'll find is 0 0.4 as a probability won't be on here exactly. So we want to see how close we can, we can get. Okay, and so I go, well, 0 0.39, I get pretty close here. Okay, 0 0.3997. Now at that point, the Z value is 1.28. And remember what this difference column means. That's a third decimal place. So if I add two more to that, that's 0 0.3999, that's pretty close to 0 0.4. So my Z value will be 1.281, all right? All right, now that I've got the Z value, I'm going to use my Z formula. Z equals X minus mu, the mean, divided by standard deviation, to solve for X. Now, what you can do is you can substitute everything into this formula and solve for X. You can put the Z value in here. You can put the standard deviation in here and the mean here. Um, or you can rearrange this formula, okay, and that, to get X by itself. And that's what I do. I multiply Z by... Uh, the standard deviation, and I get z times the standard deviation equals x minus the mean. And then I just uh, add the mean to the other side to get x by itself. Now, that's pretty handy because now that I've got x by itself, let's just write it like x equals z times the standard deviation plus the mean, um, it's a lot easier to substitute than it is to solve that, I think. Okay, so we go, oh, okay, well, what is that x? That, what is that x? It's uh, z value, 1.281 times my standard deviation, which is 13, <laughs> plus my mean of 280. Okay, and that will give me the variable that I'm solving for, which in this case is 
296.653 millimeters to be exact. Um, okay, and so that's that's the length that 10% uh, would be would be greater than if this were normally distributed. Okay, let's look at another example here. Okay, using the same mean and standard deviation, let's try this one. Find the length that is exceeded by 75%. Okay. Uh, still normally distributed, so I'm going to draw my x curve. Uh, my mean is still 280 millimeters. Now, more than 75%, well, that's more than half. So that means it, it's going to be, well, we'll say it's about right here, I guess. And it means that everything to the right of that is going to be 75%, because remember, that's 50%. Half of the curve is 50%. Okay, so thinking about this, um, th this side, of course, is just 0 0.5. And that part right there, to add up to 75%, is going to be 0 0.25. Okay, so I do my shading appropriately. That's everything more than um, th this is, oh, let's put the X here. I'm trying to solve for that value. And I'm going to look up 0 0.25 on my probability chart like I did last time. Okay, and I see how close I can get. Okay, remember 0 0.25 is my probability, so I look up, okay, um, don't want to go too over, I'll see if I can get close. That's 0 0.2486, and if I add 13 more, I get uh, 0 0.2499, close enough, at 0 0.674, 0 0.674. Okay, now before I do anything, my z value, which I need to do to plug into the formula, if it's below the mean, which it is, this is why shading is important here, if it's below the mean, my z value will be negative. They, they don't give you negative z values on this. All these z values are positive. But we need to remember, if the value is below the mean, the z value will be negative. Okay, there's our, there's our helpful reminder. Uh, so now, I've got... Um, uh, the z value, I've got the mean, I've got the standard deviation, I've got everything I need to find x. And remember, I'm going to use my formula uh, that I rearranged to get x by itself, uh, which is z times the standard deviation plus the mean. Okay, I just did my z value, it was negative 0 0.674 times my standard deviation, which is the same, 13, times the mean, oh, plus the mean, sorry about that bit messy but that's okay and my my random variable it better be less than 280 because it's got to be below that mean and of course it is at 271.238 millimeters would be the value of x that is exceeded by 75 percent all right so we have time for one more let's try it okay let's take a look at this final one calculate the range of length of the central 30 percent uh, w what does that central 30% look like? Um, okay, it's symmetrical. Drawing my X curve, that wasn't too great right there. Um, my mean is still going to be 280. And my central 30% is going to be 15% on this side and 15% on this side. And I will have two X values, X1 and X2. Okay, and of course, um, if that's the central 30%, that's 15% on one side, which is 0 0.1, whoops, 0 point, oh, that's terrible, 0 0.15. And I look up that probability, 0 0.15, on my sheet, like we've been doing, and I get a Z value. Um, the Z value I get for X2, well, should we do X2 first, because that's going to give me the positive one. X2 will give me Z2. Sorry, not X2. It would give me 0 0.385 for my Z value on that side. Okay, And, of course, my other Z value, Z1, on the other side, it's going to be symmetrical, so it's just going to be a negative 0 0.385 because it's below the mean. Okay, So let's uh, solve for X on this side first, and then we'll solve on X on this side. And the range means I'm just going to find their difference. So substituting in my values for x2, I get um, 0 0.385 times my standard deviation, which is 13, plus my mean, which is 280. And so for that z x value above the mean, 
I get 285 something. Of course. Now let's find the z value, uh, the x value that's below the mean. And I say, okay, well, um, uh, x1 is going to equal um, z1 times the standard deviation plus the mean. So that means x1 is going to equal negative 0 0.385 times the standard deviation of 13 plus my mean of 280. And I will get a value of about 275 millimeters. Okay, that's right. That's below the mean. That's right. That one's above the mean. Now I just find their difference. Of course, the range is x2 minus x1. Uh, these values, which I just solved for here, and I think my range comes out to be about um, 10 millimeters, 10.01 millimeters. Okay. Well, there are some examples of inverse normal. Uh, hope that helped.